Hey, welcome to the new season of Let's Talk Gardening. It's hosted by Dr. Norma Samuel and myself, Lisa Sanderson, with UFI Phys Extension in Sumter County. Today we're going to start with a few invasive plants uh, that you might find in your garden that I can show you here in this one. All right, so what you see here is Kogan grass. And so this is something that uh, we thought we had taken care of last year and then COVID came and so there were um, some expansions of Kogan grass which pretty much had been uh, looked like it was gone from our garden um, last fall and so it is uh, returned with a bit of a vengeance. So this is a it's called Imperata cylindrica. The one thing I do want you to know is that there is an ornamental grass called blood grass that people love to have in their gardens because it is really attractive but it is just a cultivar of Kogan grass, that same uh, Imperata cylindrica. So I want to make sure that you're not planting that as well. So I know it's really appealing, but it is uh, something that also will spread. Uh, so it's a weedy pest actually in 73 countries. And so uh, it's in the U.S. It's primarily in the southeast, which is where we are. And here it is. Uh, so it started in Alabama. Uh, and they put it out there for pastures. They thought it might work for pastures and as a soil stabilizer. Uh, and so in Florida, it's been here since the 1930s and 40s and it's pretty much found in every county in Florida now. So this is actually a serious problem. Now, while you see a lot of plant here, you can understand that 60% of this plant is actually underground. So it has rhizomes. And so I actually have one of these that I've got right here sitting on a, a bench so that you can see what it looks like. And so these are the, you can see how they're spreading right through here, right in there, uh, and how it has this sharp root that's right through there. And so that's what this plant looks like. So these can get to be, uh, up here, these can get to be uh, almost six feet tall. So they can have very tall leaves. Uh, and there's some some distinctive characteristics that you can see about it too. Uh, let's see if I can pull this over so you can see it. So there is a uh, supposed to be a white midrib which is off center, and so you can kind of see that. I'm hoping you can see that here. I'm not, maybe I'm not too far. So there is a midrib that's running along the side of this one particular leaf, which isn't going down the center, and so that's one of those ways that you can identify that this is a problem. The other thing that I want you to take from this is that it is allelopathic. So this plant, um, I actually have wonderfully desirable plants in here, which I don't see right now. Uh, and so these will end up killing off some of those plants that you have um, over time. And so you may find that this is the only thing you see in there because of the allelopathic pen, uh, tendencies of this plant. The other thing too is that while I show you those um, the rhizomes that I showed you, sometimes they are most of them are like within six feet of the soil, uh, uh, six inches. I'm sorry, six inches of the soil. They can go as deep as about four feet, um, and so they're responsible for supporting that plant. So for some some reason, um, you you got rid of the top of it, they're easily uh, able to come back. And also, like um, other grasses that have those uh, rhizomes, if you were to just go through and pull it out, you're propagating it, and so you're making more. So this is actually a real problem for us, uh, and so this is one of those things that we will still be working to eradicate uh, in this garden. Uh, and uh, in some places, it takes many years to get rid of it. This is a relatively small stand, but some people have much more area of Kogan grass than we have right now. Okay, so the other thing that I want you to know is that the, there, in addition to short-term spread from rhizomes, which seems not too short spread right here, uh, but is relatively short spread, it also makes seed, and I have not seen seed heads in here, and there's not evidence of it spreading from seed um, in Central Florida. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen, we, I just don't think they have the evidence of that happening. Um, but it can spread readily and so in de depending on where it is uh, could when it produces its its seed head uh, It can produce a lot of seed and so that should be able to spread in other places and Then this could show up in other places within Florida uh, and so 
it's one of those plants that you don't really want to have in your garden. So this is an invasive plant. This is Kogan grass, Imperata cylindrica. All right, so I know what y'all are thinking. This is such a tiny little thing um, in the garden. And so with the, well, I'm up in the 35 mile an hour garden and Jim Davis actually found these um, little mini trees uh, in uh, our, the far end of our 35 mile an hour garden. So what this boils down to is, this is what you might find in your garden. So if you're trying to identify something that just showed up, because birds will end up taking the fruit, which is a droop, um, resulting from flowers that happen in the spring. They'll take the fruit from mature trees, which these are not, uh, and then will drop them like they did here. And so these have shown up uh, because they were um, uh, dropped, the fruit was dropped, germinated, and grew into three small trees. And so they're right in here. And I know you're thinking, well, gosh, this looks so tiny. Uh, but what happens is these turn into trees that can be 70 feet tall, have profoundly strong wood, uh, and then um, the uh, right now the wood is kind of like it looks like it's red but if you far look farther down into the tree it's actually um, like a light green color um, and so I don't know if you can see that or not um, but it is light green the way that you identify these is by the the fragrance of the foliage it smells like camphor so if you were to take the leaf which I'm going to take one off and I'll show you that it's it's uh, really glossy on top and it's kind of uh, white on the bottom and then you crush the foliage and you can smell the camphor whew, uh, Camphor smell that you can smell on the leaf and so it's very distinctive And so you would be able to identify this just by crushing the leaf and smelling it uh, It's actually related uh, Cinnamoma and I can't remember the um, the uh, Species name, but also cinnamon also has one that makes the cinnamon um, along the bark but if you are uh, thinking this is a plant that you should probably wait and see what it turns into, this is one of those invasive plants. It's actually uh, escaped um, into uh, uh, Florida, Louisiana, and parts of Texas. Um, so this can get to be um, a pretty large tree. In fact, there are some that apparently are pretty dramatic and may have those, um, may have the, uh, trunks that can be as much as six feet around and they're very strong uh, but because of those droops carrying it all over it's really kind of going all over the place and so this is a, an invasive tree um, right now it's an invasive small plant but will could potentially be an invasive tree here so you are to watch for these um, they can be very large trees and may look um, so much bigger than these small things that I'm showing you today but this is uh, Cinnamomum camp, uh, camphora, uh, camphora. All right, so you can see the property behind where I live is pretty much a big wooded lot. So no one lives behind me. Uh, and so there's a lot of wild things growing back there, some of which have made their may way to my garden. And so we've looked at a few things here before, but this one is called air potato. So it's Dioscoria. Bulbifera, uh, and so it's an invasive vine. Uh, and so this one's called air potato. I tried to look for some of the bulbils that you'll find on this plant. I can't seem to find them on my side. If I were to hike over to the other side, which I find a little scary, uh, I, yeah, I could hike over there and perhaps find some of them. This this is an invasive vine that grows into um, uh, mature canopies of trees, and we've got some very large trees over there. I would imagine we find some of that in there. I know that we've got some growing behind the fence over here. Uh, and so this is actually uh, something's called air potato because what well, you don't see on the ones I've got here, which are really kind of low to the ground, uh, it grows these bulbils or air potatoes. And that's one of the ways that it propagates itself. So it is a, um, a plant that is uh, really not a great plant to have in your garden. So these are not just weeds and so weeds are things that are plants that are growing um, not where you want to have them. Uh, these are actually um, things that may interfere with the natural communities. So this came from uh, European contact. 
So this was not something that you would have found here ordinarily. It is something that came from uh, that European contact, uh, probably 1500 or so is when it came here. And this is capable of reproducing out of cultivation. Uh, and so those bulbils that form uh, are able to uh, reproduce that particular plant. And so uh, not only that, but you'll find that there would be where this plant originates in that other garden over there or that other landscape. You would find uh, where this plant starts comes from one of those bulbils. And a lot of times uh, volunteers are going through and that may actually be one right there. I'm looking right here. Um, so you may find that that's a bulbil right there. But these will sit there and propagate from those bulbils. And people will go through and collect them. Now they do not tolerate uh, frost or freezing. So the bulbils will not survive if the temperatures drop to be very cold. Uh, but this is something that you want to have not um, present because this would be able to make a whole new stand of this particular plant. So this is actually known as one of Florida's most invasive plant species. Uh, so air potatoes should be removed when you find it. And so lo and behold, I will pull out the stuff that I'm able to pull out on my side of the fence. Uh, and I don't have access to the property over there. And so I'm thinking there's probably a few other invasive things over there. Uh, but it, the Florida exotic plant pest um, yeah, area, their FLEPSI, um, is supposed to uh, have this listed as a, a horribly invasive plant. Uh, so these can't be tolerated. They can't are introduced, possessed, moved, or released out of um, uh, their the area. So you ha they're supposed to be removed whenever you find them. So these can get to be about 60 feet. So if you're looking at some of the trees that I have out there that I think are much taller than that, but if you're looking in there, they could easily be taking over some of those trees uh, the way that they grow up. So it vigorously grows and it twines to the left. So, there are, so this is how you identify another uh, vine that looks exactly like this. So there's um, an air yam. Uh, which could look very much the same uh, and the air yam apparently twines to the right So that's one of those things that you need to know about So if you're trying to identify what this is the bulbils will form in the leaf axles And so that's where you typically will find them in those leaf axles uh, but it is a um, a really not a very great plant to have obviously the although I will tell you that I think that the leaves are somewhat ornamental so you may find that you have this in your landscape and didn't even know it that that's a, a not a good plant to have so uh, the, so as I mentioned they don't uh, tolerate freezing but there's been a lot of volunteer activity and uh, in other counties uh, in uh, Florida where volunteers go through and they remove the bulbils during that active growing time and so that they can not propagate from those bulbils. And then the other thing they have is there is an air potato leaf beetle and so an air potato leaf beetle will be uh, have been released but you can also I think you may still be able to order them from University of Florida uh, and so those will end up um, coming through and, and eating holes into the leaves. And so eventually if you're removing the potatoes and they're, they're uh, probably breaking down as much photosynthetic ability as they can as they're eating the holes and skeletonizing those leaves. Uh, but that's Liliocerus um, chaini. Uh, and so they were first released in Florida in 2011. And so the, uh, the, the only other thing you could use is glyphosate. Uh, and so I'm almost thinking that glyphosate by itself may not because of the cuticle um, layer on here, but glyphosate is a non-selective herbicide, which you could also use uh, to manage this particular invasive plant. And so this is air potato or Dioscoria bulbifera. Uh, and so um, the other one is a, um, uh, an air yam. Uh, apparently which is supposed to be edible but the air potato is not and so if you find these in your garden and you think that it's an ornamental vine you need to think otherwise so this is uh, air potato thanks so much for joining me today I'm Lisa Sanderson with UFI's extension in Sumter County for Let's Talk Gardening